Assignment 8-1. Lesson 8-1 was on differential equations. Sometimes they're called diffy cues. I, I'm going to tell you that this lesson 8-1 and assignment 8-1, that in university, uh, this could be a whole course. So we're just introducing differential equations. Sometimes they're called diffy cues. If you go to university, which you will, and take math in university, which you will, um, you might take a class called differential equations or diffy cues. So here's it. This is an introduction to it. This can be a rabbit hole. And if you get into the rabbit hole, you'll come out okay. So let's look at number one. We'll practice together. So for number one, the question is y prime. Differential equation means you're given the derivative. And can you integrate and tell me the e function or equation that goes with that derivative? So that's ultimately what we're doing. So a differential equation means it's a derivative equation. Can you integrate and work backwards to tell me uh, the equation that goes with it? So for number one through four, you're asked to find the general equation. Uh, so that means that you're not given a point to do the extra steps. So let's go through the steps to solve a diffy q. So y prime, we need to change to dy by dx. That's step one. Step two is we need to separate the variables. We need the y's on one side and the x's on the other side. So to do that, I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by 2y squared plus 3. So by doing that, I'm rearranging the equation. So all the y's are on one side, 2y squared plus 3 dy. And then the dx's divide out, the 2y squared plus 3 divides out. And I have x squared, oops, subtract 1 dx on the right. So I have all the y's on the left. I have the x's on the right. We're now ready to integrate both sides. So we're going to integrate both sides with respect to y and with respect to x. So the integration of 2y squared, make sure that you add 1 to the exponent and divide when I do that. So if I add 1 to the exponent, it's now 3, and then divide by it. So instead of 2y squared, it's 2y cubed divided by 3. The integration of 3 is 3y, and then on the right side, x squared, add 1 to the exponent and divide, and negative 1 is negative x, and then don't forget the constant because we don't have any point to plug in. Now, in the question itself, it says you don't have to go any further. So to solve for y here, you could, but honestly, it's very challenging to get y by itself. So we want to get to this step in number one, and you're done. In number two, it says for this one, solve for y. So for this one, when we get there, we're going to solve for y and get y by itself compared to number one. So for number two, step one is done for you, which is to take out the y prime and make it dy by dx. The next step is to separate the variables. So the good first step to do this always is to multiply both sides by dx. That will tell you where x needs to go and where y needs to go. So by multiplying by dx, I have e to the x y dy is equal to 1 dx or just dx. That tells me the x's need to go to the right and the y's need to go to the left. dx cannot be in the denominator. So the first step is to multiply by dx so you can see where they belong. So I'm going to divide by e to the x and then I'm going to rewrite it. So instead of writing it as dx divided by e to the x, I'm going to write it as e to the negative x dx. They mean the same thing. So it's important to know that you have the algebra skill to write this fraction with a negative exponent. We're now going to integrate both sides. So the integration of y is y squared divided by 2. The integration of e to the negative x. Well, the derivative of negative x is negative, so it needs a negative in front. So it's negative e to the negative x plus the constant. We're then going to multiply everything times 2. So if I multiply by 2, 
This is what I get. Now here's a very good skill to have. 2C is a constant, and I can replace 2C with another symbol that means a constant. Now C2 is a different constant than 2C, but it's just a constant nonetheless. So to make the algebra simpler, I can replace 2C with another C, I'll call it sub two. <coughs> so you can't go 2C equals C, so it needs a different symbol. But then when I do this, I only have one constant and that makes the algebra a little bit easier. And then the next step is to take the square root. Now on this one, the answer could be positive or negative, the general equation. So it's positive or negative, the square root of negative 2x, negative 2e to the negative x plus c2. Now the only way you would know if it was positive or negative is you have to be given a point in the question and you look at the y coordinate of that point to know which one of these you'd use. Number three. In number three, you have 2x times y prime is equal to y plus 1. Again, for this one, it says don't solve for y. So number four and uh, number two are the only ones we'll do that. So what's the first step here to solve this diffy q is to replace the y prime with dy by dx. The next step is to multiply both sides by dx. See, by doing that, you know where each thing belongs. So by multiplying by dx, the dx is eliminate, and we have 2x dy is equal to y plus 1 dx. So the more you do this, it will require less steps to separate the variables. But for right now, as you're practicing, take the first step, multiply both sides by dx, then do it in two steps to get the y's on one side and the x's on the other. So to get y plus 1 to the other side, we're going to divide. To get 2x to the other side, we're also going to divide. And that's what we're going to integrate. So when we have a fraction, it could be a logarithm. The derivative of y plus 1 is 1. So it's set up to be a logarithm. So it's ln y plus 1. On the right side, the derivative of 2x is 2, so I actually need a 1 half to undo it. So it's 1 half ln 2x, and then the constant. And then we're just going to let that go and not solve for y. I'm always checking the answer key, make sure I'm, I'm doing okay. So that's a good answer. Number four. For this one, it says solve for y. So, as always, you can press pause and try it, or if you need my support, every step, you just let me support you. So we already have dy by dx, so my suggestion is to multiply both sides by dx first. So then that eliminates, dx cannot be in the denominator, so it tells me y needs to be on the left, so I divide by 2y. And then on the other side, I divide by x minus 2. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I'm actually going to multiply both sides by 2. So the simpler the left side looks, the easier it will be to solve for y. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. You didn't have to. It just requires more steps after you integrate to get y by itself. So I multiply both sides by 2 to make this as simple as possible. So now I can integrate this. This is ln y. On the right side, I have 2 ln x minus 2. And then the candy, or the constant. To get y by itself, how do I do that? So the answer to this is, I need to write this as an exponential. So to write this as an exponential, what's inside the logarithm and then we use the base e is the base for that logarithm. And then all of this will be in the exponent. Now we're going to do some fun algebra to get y by itself. Well, I guess we could leave it that way. 
Did they leave it that way in the answer key? Because really, Y is by itself now. All right, they did some some algebra here in order to like make it look even better than the way it looks right now. So let's just do some work here. So if there's multiple choice, then you'd have that ability to do it. So a property of logarithms is that two can be the exponent inside. And as soon as it becomes an exponent two, we don't need the absolute value bars because it will always be positive. We're also going to write this constant differently. I want you to know that if you're adding two exponents, we could write this as two exponentials multiplying. So I want you to see that they are equivalent. This is important in terms of algebra. So if you multiply and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So these are equivalent. Now, why would I do that? So to remove the absolute value bars is similar to solving a quadratic. So inside the absolute value bars could be positive or negative and give you the same answer. So that positive or negative, I'm going to multiply and I'm going to put it in front. And let me show you what I'm doing. So this positive or negative e to the c is just a constant. So I'm going to take positive or negative e to the c and reclassify it as just c2. So I'm going to redefine it. So I take that ugly part out and just going to make it c2, which is a constant. But now it looks a little simpler. Now this is a property of logarithms. E to the lawn means they cross out. And all you're left with then is x plus 2 squared. So I wonder, did you follow the algebra to the end there? Oh, do you know what I noticed? It went from x subtract 2 to x plus 2. So this would be subtracting all the way along here. So I don't know why I did that. So I accidentally made it plus when it was really subtracting. So it's x subtract 2 squared. All right. I didn't, that algebra isn't simple, but we need to have those algebra skills. Number five. So a number five, oops, you're given dy by dx equals negative 2x over y. And it gives you a point. So with that point, you can then find the particular solution with no C involved. So we have a Diffie Q. We need to do the antiderivative integrate. So first, I'm going to multiply both sides by dx. And then after I multiply both sides by dx, I need to separate the variables. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y. And do you have the skill to separate the variables? Then we integrate both sides. So the integration of y is y squared divided by 2. The integration of negative 2x is negative 2x squared divided by 2. And then we have the constant. At this step, we can substitute in to solve for c if we like. Or we can then solve it a little bit further. So let's say that I want to solve for c right now. If I want to solve for C right now, I can plug in. So I can plug in what Y equals, which is negative 4. Uh, 2 divided by 2, that's just negative 1. And now you can solve for C by substituting the point. This is 16 divided by 2. This is negative 4. So if you add 4, C is equal to 12. All right, we can now go back to this equation. y squared over 2 is equal to negative 1x squared plus 12. So now we can go back here, and our next step still is to get y by itself. 
So I'm going to multiply everything times 2. And then I'm going to take the square root. Now, when I solve a quadratic, the answer could be positive or negative. So I have to look at the y coordinate. So this point is 2, negative 4. It's the y coordinate that tells me which one I should use. Because the y coordinate is negative, the correct answer is negative in front and this. And there's your answer. So it's not both. If you're given a point, it's one or the other. And the indicator to know which one to pick is the y coordinate. Is the y coordinate positive or is it negative? All right, number six. These aren't short questions, are they? But I like these questions. And you can kind of see how this could be a course in university. And we're just introducing it right now. All right, so we're given a diffy Q. You're given a point, 1, E. And we're going to use that to find the particular solution. All right, so what's step one to solve this diffy Q? Multiply both sides by dx. So it's already dy by dx. Multiply by dx. So if I multiply by dx, it tells me where each thing belongs. So the x's go with dx and the y's go with dy. So I'm going to divide by negative 3x. And I'm going to divide by y. Now, if you like at this point, we can rearrange it so it feels more comfortable. So the left and right side can flip so that you have the order that you're most comfortable with. Now we're going to integrate both sides. So the integration of 1 over y is ln absolute value of y. For this one, the derivative of negative 3x is negative 3. So I need a negative 1 third in front. And then it's ln x. And then we need the constant. Now I'm going to write this exponentially. Then we have to use some properties. So one of the properties is that negative a third is an exponent inside the logarithm. So it's negative one third as an exponent inside the logarithm. Instead of plus c, I'm going to go times e to the c. They're equivalent. But then I can remove the absolute value bars, and that times e to the c can go in front multiplying. And then I can do a substitution to make this easier. So I'm going to let c2 equal positive or negative e to the c. So I'm going to do that substitution to make the constant easier to work with. And e to the lawn, they cross out. This is a property of logarithms. They undo each other. And I'll left with is x to the exponent negative one third. All right, at this point, it'd be easiest. So at any point, I could have tried to solve for the constant. But at this point, it's the easiest. So now I'm going to put this in, 1 and e. So y is e, and x is positive 1. So 1 to any exponent is 1. So C2 is just equal to E. So go back here. Just go back two steps. Take out C2. It's now E. And you have your answer. Oops, this should be X to the negative a third. Another way you could write this, so I just went right back up here. You could also write this as E over the cube root of X. Both would be equivalent, right? But this is a great answer. This is a great answer. Happy we're done, right? All right, good job. Notice this is taking one page to do all the work. I see it too. But whatever work I make you do, I also do with you, right? Number seven. We work together. And we know that hard work works. So dy by dt equals ky. This is actually a preview of the next lesson, 8-2. And then it says y at 0 equals 100. So with 0, 100 is a point we're going to use. And k is a constant. 
So notice we don't have dx. So we're going to multiply both sides by dt. And then the y's need to be on one side, and it's the t's on the other side. k is just a constant. Um, and we're going to uh, join it with dt. So that's just any constant. Could be 3, 5, 8, 9,000, whatever. So divide by y. Now we're set up to integrate. So the integration of 1 over y is ln absolute value of y. The integration of k dt is kt. So the derivative of kt would be k. So they're inverses of each other and then the constant. Now we're going to do the work we've been doing a lot of. Write this exponentially. For this one, there's nothing that simplifies here, so I'm going to write this as times e to the c. Oops. So if I remove the absolute value bars, it would be positive or negative e to the c times e to the kt. And then I'm going to replace that challenging constant with something simpler. And you have to write down the substitution that you used. And there it is. Now I can plug in. So the point was the y coordinate's 100, and the t coordinate is 0. So e to the 0 is 1. So c2 is equal to 100. So if I put this all together, it's y equals 100 e to the kt. This is the exponential growth model that you can use if something grows in nature or in finances in terms of your account. We're going to do more of this exponential growth or decay in our next lesson. All right, number uh, eight. It's going to get simpler. So this is the last one from this lesson, the last one to practice. Find an equation of a function which contains the point negative 2, 1, and whose slope is defined as. So the word slope means derivative. So that means dy by dx equals this. So if the slope is defined that way, dy by dx means slope. So we write that in. There's our diffy q. Multiply both sides by dx. You can also multiply by 2y. So can you separate the variables at this point? So the x is on one side and the y is on the other. Integrate both sides. Simplify. At any point, we could substitute in. I'm going to do it now. So I'm going to plug in positive 1 for y. I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x. And then I'm going to solve for the constant. So that's 4 divided by 2. So if I subtract 2, c is equal to negative 1. So if I go back to y squared, so if I go back here to y squared, y squared is equal to 1 half x squared and then the c is negative 1. To get y by itself, take the square root. Now this answer could be positive or negative. So if I look at the point that was given, the y coordinate is a positive number. So it's the positive, oops, I'll put a positive, whatever. That's a, screw here. It's a positive in front, not a negative, and it's the square root of 1 half x squared, take away 1. Number nine. So these are pre-calculus questions to remind you how to simplify. Could you do the algebra to simplify it? When you divide and the bases are the same, you subtract the exponents. Ln and E undo each other, so you're just left with 2 subtract root x. Number 10, can you simplify e to the exponent ln a uh, subtract ln b? So the rule here is when you're subtracting, you divide, and then e and ln uh, undo each other, and you're just left with a divided by b. Number 11, y equals 
3 to the exponent 2t subtract 1 times t squared. Differentiate. This is called the product rule. So the product rule is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. At the derivative of an exponential, you copy it. The derivative of the exponent, which is 2. And then because the base is not e, we need the extra hook ln 3 at the end. Done. Number 12. f at y equals e to the square root y over y squared. This is going to require the quotient rule. So what is the quotient rule? So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top. So you copy it times what's the derivative of the square root of y? Subtract the top times the derivative of the bottom and then the bottom squared. All right, take a moment. Make sure you're a good rule follower there. Number 13. These you can definitely try first. You should try first. And then press play if you want to learn it. So if you want to learn this, press pause, then do it with me. So e to the x times ln x is the product rule. That's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, and that's it. Number 14. For these, we're going to do the antiderivative, or we're going to integrate. So for this one, I see a fraction. So if I want to integrate this, then the derivative the derivative of the denominator. So write down the denominator, the derivative of this, the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x, and then the derivative of the exponent is negative 1. So the only difference here is it needs a negative in front. Then you can undo this and then recognize it's a logarithm. So the absolute value, whatever's in the denominator, and it needs to be a negative in front, plus c. Number 15. So for this one, the first thing I notice is there's a monomial in the denominator. So because of that, I'm going to write it as two fractions. So 2x over x minus 4 over x. Then I'm going to simplify it. And then I'm going to do the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of 2 is 2x. The antiderivative of 4 over x is minus 4 ln x. And then don't forget the constant. Number 16. y prime is equal to ln t cubed divided by t. So what I notice here is I see 1 over t in front. If I want to integrate this to know what y equals, recognize the derivative of the base 
is 1 over t. So that's the correct hook. I don't need to change anything. All I got to do is add 1 to the exponent and divide and then the constant. Number 17. These are the most important questions because these are the review questions so that you're practicing and don't forget. So 1 half to the x, y equals 0, x equals negative 2, and then x equals 0. So those are the bounds, and you're asked to find the area of that. All right, I need to know what the graph 1 half to the x, uh, what the graph looks like. So if you like, you could also write it like this both are equivalent so it's like 2 to the x with a reflection see if the base is a half it's gonna decrease or decay so I just need a sketch of what it looks like it doesn't have to be hundred percent accurate as long as you have a sketch so there's the sketch of one half to the x it's decreasing decaying and it's negative 2 to 0 and y equals 0 so the area is right here this is the area that we're finding so how do I find area under a curve that's an integration question I'm integrating from negative 2 to 0 and it's top subtract bottom so that would be 1 half to the x subtract 0 or just 1 half to the x. So there it is. To integrate this, an exponential, it's 1 half to the x times ln 1 half. Oh, divided by that, sorry. So the rule is 1 half divided by ln to the half. And then I plug in negative 2 and 0 as my limits. So plug in the upper limit first. And then plug in the lower limit. And there's the area underneath the curve. Are you ready? Number 18. Remember, you don't have to do it all at once. So you can take a break and come back. Without using a calculator, find the volume. And so I got y equals the square root of x over x squared plus 2. And we have uh, y equals 0, x equals 0, x equals 2. And we're going to revolve that around the x axis. All right, so what would I do with something I have no clue what exactly it's going to look like. Like the domain restriction here is x can't be negative, but x can be 0, by the way, because 0 divided by 2, the square root of 0. So that's the smallest number here. So get a sense of the domain. So the domain goes from 0 to infinity. So if I was going to graph this, why not, right? 0 gives me the answer 0. What else do I need to plug in? 1 and 2. Well, if I plug in 1, I get 1 over uh, 1 squared plus 2, so 1 third. So let's, let's say there. Even if it's not quite the scale. So 1 gives me the answer 1 third. 2. It's the square root of one third, so it's even shorter, sorry. And then two gives me two over two squared, that's uh, four plus two. So it's two over six, the same thing? It's the same thing. If I plug in a number between 1 and 2, like 1 and a half, I'm going to help you with the graph. It rises a bit. 
and then comes back down again. But I guess what's most important here, even if the sketch is a bit off, is how do you find, this is the area right here, right? Between one, and zero and two, and y equals zero, there it is. We're revolving this. Is this gonna be a disc, or is this gonna be a washer in terms of what I'm revolving in? Can you see it's a disc? So it's an integration question from zero to two. The square root of x and x squared plus two I'm going to square it, so it's pi r squared dx. So there it is. That's the volume. So it actually find the volume. So I actually have to do the next steps. So when you square and square root, they undo each other. This is going to be a logarithm because the derivative of the bottom is 2x so I need uh, one half in front so I can undo this so they stay the same I'm gonna continue this on the next page so this is still number 18 so I have pi over 2 I'm integrating from 0 to 2 2x over x squared plus 2 dx so I'm gonna undo that so it's a logarithm of the denominator and I'm going from 0 to 2. So pi over 2 can stay in front. Plug in 2 to begin with. Plug in 0. And then if you wanted to, you could simplify this. This is ln 6, subtract ln 2. And it's done. That's the volume by revolving, right? Some fancy dancy stuff, isn't it? If you wanted to also, ln 6 divided by ln 6 subtract ln 2 could be written as 6 divided by 2. So you could actually also simplify it to that. That's a good skill to have on a multiple choice if you had that answer that you had to get to. Number 19. Without using a calculator. Uh, find the volume of the solid formed by square cross-sections perpendicular to the y-axis whose base is the region bounded by so we have x times y equals 4 and we have x equals 0 y equals 1 and y equals 4 all right so I'm actually gonna solve for x because this is what I need so it's in terms of perpendicular uh, to the y-axis. I'm going to find some points here between uh, if y is 1 or if between y is 1 and 4. So I have some points to go by. So I'm going to go there from 1 to 4. So let's say I plug in 1 for y. What's x? So 1, 2, 3, 4. x is 4. So 4, 1 is on the graph. See what I'm doing? If I plug in 2 for y, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 2, 2 is on the graph. If I plug in 3, I get 4. So I'm not going to get this going to be a fraction. Plug in 4 for y, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. So 1, 4 is on the graph. I want you to notice there's an asymptote here when y is 0 and if we solved it the other way so if you got y by itself you also would have the same issue here we have two asymptotes here so this is what the graph looks like and we're going from 1 to 4 and x equals 0 so this is what I'm doing right here. That's the area that I'm finding. Find the area. No, that's the base with square cross sections. So this is an integration question. So I'm going to integrate from 1 to 4. We're going to use this, 4 over y dy. Now, the curve 4 over y subtract 0 is going to be the base for my square. So my base is 4 over y. The formula for a square is I square it. 
So I need to take this and square it for a square. And that's what I'm using for the volume. So if I integrate this, it'd be 16 over y squared dy. If you want the derivative of the base and so on, this is not going to be a logarithm, number 19. So the derivative of y squared does not give me a, a term that matches in the numerator. I could actually write down the 16 in front of the integration. I can write y squared as y to the negative 2. And then the integration of this is you add 1 to the exponent and divide from 1 to 4. So you add 1 to the exponent and divide. That makes this negative 16. And then plug in the upper bound, subtract, plug in the lower bound. And then if you wanted to simplify that, you could. So this is negative 16. 4 to the negative 1 is a quarter. 1 to any exponent is 1. And then you just work your way through it. So this is negative 3 quarters. So a negative times a negative is a positive volume. So negative 16 times negative 3, I think that's positive 48 over 4. Or just, is it just 12? Yep. So the volume of that is 12. Isn't that crazy, all the work we did? And the answer is just 12. All right, number 20. All right, find the average value from negative 1 to 1 of that. How do you find average value? So to find average value, we are going to integrate from negative 1 to 1, e to the negative t squared, and then in the denominator, you subtract the limits. So there's the setup to find the average value. And then it says use a calculator. Well, then that's what I'll do. Let's do that. Because I was thinking, how do I integrate that? Because it wasn't going to... If you followed what I was doing, I wasn't sure how I was going to integrate it. So I'm going to go control divide. I'm going to go menu calculus integrate from negative 1 to positive 1. And then it's e uh, to the negative t squared dt. And then 1 take away negative 1. I know it's 2. And then you get your answer. So I got 0 0.746. All right. That's good. All right, I get to use my calculator number 21. Find you're given f at x equals uh, 3x squared plus ln and the absolute value of x. And then there's a bunch of things that you need to do. So 21 says find the derivative at 4, and there's a bunch of other stuff to do. So because there's a bunch of things I need to do with that function, I'm going to define it in my calculator first. So I'm going to remind you how to do that. So to define it in your calculator, we're going to press to graph it and press tab. And then I have something else in there already. So I'm going to press menu, and I'm going to delete it. So I have a clear slate here. So I'm going to press tab. And I'm going to type in 3x squared, move the cursor, plus lawn. Oops. All right, plus lawn. Now I need absolute value bars, so go there to absolute value bars. And x. Now the graph is probably going to be interesting, but I don't really want the graph because it does look interesting. But I just want it defined in my calculator. So now go back to calculate. So if I want to find the derivative at a point, go menu, go calculus, derivative at a point. The x is the variable. The value is at 4. Press enter. And then just press F1x. Oops. F1 parentheses x. There it is. Like that. So F1. Now that we've defined it, right? And then go Control-Enter. 
and then you have your derivative, which is 24.25. Number 22 says, same function, I want you to integrate from 1 to 7, f at x dx. So because it's already defined, it makes it much easier to do. So menu, um, calculus, integrate, and we're going from 1 to 7, and then all I have to do is type in f1 at x dx, and then it's done. So that's all I have to do to type once it's defined. It just makes it easier to work with. And then go control enter, and you have the integration. So 349.621. All right, number 23, solve the equation 3x squared plus ln x equals 0. So could you solve that equation? So again, we're going to go menu. We're going to solve it. So we're going to go algebra and solve. And the equation, we already defined it. So it's f1 um, at x equals 0. comma x and then solve it and I see two answers one that's negative and one that's positive so positive and negative 0.488 there it is so can you use your calculator? Number 24, it says f is discontinuous when x equals 0. Is the discontinuity a whole, an asymptote, or a jump for number 24? Oh, they're asking it for the same function. So at 0, there's a discontinuity. What is it on a graph? And because 0 is not included, it's everything up to 0, but not including 0 for this, and that the negative is okay, so just 0 is bad, it is an asymptote. So at x equals 0 is an asymptote for that graph. Uh, 25, again, we're going to use a calculator. So for number 25 you're given the velocity so again I'm gonna define it in my calculator to make it easier to work with and I'm gonna use X instead of T alright so I wrote it down when I define it I'm gonna use X and then I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff with it so there's the velocity so let's define that I'm gonna erase what I had before so I'm going to go here and I'm going to erase this and put in the new function I'm going to put in, which is e uh, to the exponent negative 1.3x, move the cursor, subtract x times ln 0.37x, um, parentheses are already closed, and we're done. So double check, did I type it in okay? Oops, here. Did I type it in okay? e to the negative 1.3x subtract x times ln 0.37x looks good. So now, that's what the graph kind of looks fun, right? But um, now when I go back here, I can actually calculate what I need to calculate. So that's the velocity. So a, find when the velocity is at rest or when it's at rest. So that's when the velocity is equal to zero. So I'm going to solve. I'm going to go menu. You still have to write down what you're doing, notice, even when you use your calculator. Uh, we're going to go algebra and solve. And then what am I solving again? Is I'm just taking f1 um, at x equal to zero. And then comma x. So when is the particle at rest? And I get 2.731. And I'm always looking at the answer key. It's correct because sometimes I make mistakes and it's okay. 
Just try to keep learning from them. And that's in seconds. No, it doesn't even give me a unit. So I'm just going to keep it that way. Part B asks uh, the speed of the particle at uh, t equals 4. So speed is the absolute value of velocity. So that's what I want. So how do I type that in? So press the number beside 9 to get the absolute value bars. So press this absolute value and then type in F1 uh, at 4. So I get 1.562. C says the acceleration at 5. So the acceleration is the derivative of velocity at 5. So just the derivative at 5. So press menu, calculus, derivative at a point. That's uh, the values at 5. Enter, and then just go F1 at X. And then you get your derivative. See how simple it is if we define it first? So the acceleration is negative 1.617. And then part D what's the total distance? So to find total distance, we integrate. Now we're finding the total distance from 1 to 5. So we integrate 1 for 5. Uh, total distance is the absolute value of the velocity. So that's what's going to give me the total distance, the absolute value. That's what I'm going to type in. I'm fighting this uh, laser beam, but I'm still going to fight through to finish the assignment for you. So uh, menu calculus, absolute value, oh, sorry, menu calculus, integrate, and we're integrating from 1 to 5, then absolute value. And then it's F1 at x, dx. And the total distance is 4.510. Awesome. All right, what's left? Number 26. For number 26, e to the 2x subtract 3 equals 7, convert it, and then solve for x. So can you solve that equation? Write this as a logarithm. So the exponent, the logarithm with the base of e is ln, that's 7. The exact answer here, you would add 3. So add 3 and then divide everything by 2. That's the exact answer. You could use your calculator too, but unnecessary. For that, that's a perfect answer. 27, use properties of logarithms to solve this equation. So 3 log base 2x. Let me just write it out. And then we're going to use properties of logarithms to solve it. So there's the equation. Uh, the one property, that's an exponent inside. Again, that property is an exponent inside. Oops, I should say subtract. Then, to write this as one logarithm, x cubed times x plus 1 divided by x squared. So then, if you're adding, you multiply them together. Subtracting means you divide. Write this exponentially. So what's inside, I'm going to simplify that in a second. The base is 2 to the exponent 1. So x squared makes this just an x. So when you distribute, you get x squared plus x equals 2. It's a quadratic. Subtract 2. Factor it. What two numbers multiply to negative 2 and combine to positive 1? Each factor has a solution. And then you have to check. Remember that you could have an extraneous solution for a logarithm. So negative 2, if I put it back into the logarithm, gives me a negative number inside there. So that's a domain restriction. So that's called extraneous. And the only solution is positive 1. Last one. My goodness, we got there. 
hey, it's not even been an hour. My goal is to try to make sure it's about an hour to do your homework. That's it. And it's not like every day. So twice a week, right, kind of thing for an hour. All right, f and g are inverse functions. The graph of g uh, passes through the points negative 1 and 2. So for g at x and f at x, they're inverses. So I got negative 1, 2. That means the inverse of that is 2, negative 1. And then the derivative. So the derivative at 2 is equal to negative 1. So that means the derivative here at negative 1 would be the reciprocal of that. So for this one, the answer would be the reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. So because negative 1 and the reciprocal is, they have the same answer. That's part A. Part B says, what's the derivative at 2? And for that one, I don't have, do we have enough information? Oh, the other point that you're given is 2, negative 1. So if on G you have 2, negative 1, then negative 1, 2 is on F. So I'm just trying to make sure I organize it and understand it. So the derivative at negative 1 for F is negative 2 in the question. So the derivative at 2 would be the reciprocal of that. So that would be, the answer here would be negative a half. A little confusing because the points are inverses of each other. So that just gave me a bit of a headache. But you know what? We got to the end of it. So we're not even at an hour. Mr. G, math over and out. I'm super proud of you that you worked and hard work does work. And until next time.